a recent trip to Salima, some 100 plus kilometers from the capital Lilongwe, introduced this reporter to some children on the streets begging and vending. Behind several of them are heartlanding stories, stories that have fast tracked them into assuming roles of fully grown adults, both to faint for themselves and many more behind them. I later took on some individuals on their awareness of street connected children. I pity their future. They have no future. Back to the capital Lilongwe, this time to one of its suburbs, where I meet 63-year-old Magizulu. She survives on cells from traditional medicine. Her house is home to 10 orphans below the age of 14. They take to the streets in order to make life happen. They collect bottles and sell them for food. A stone throw away from Zulu's house is 28-year-old Annie Lyson, a mother of eight. Among the eight is a 17-year-old boy turned into a sore breadwinner. Theirs is yet another testament of urban poverty. He brings us money to buy food. Narratives from a number of street-connected children point to Lilongwe Dump site as a homestead of life-sustaining supplies. Despite the threat that COVID-19 pandemic presents, masking up, social distancing and regular washing of hands with soap are deemed luxuries for the rich here. Day in, day out, in their quest to make ends meet, street-connected children must brave against the old, like one Meki Moyo, who has depended on the provisions of the dump site for the past 15 years. As kids, we own and own tire as a source of hope. The challenge is common in several cities in the developing world, including several SADC member states. The case at hand serves as a reminder why we need to pay particular attention on the need for wealth creation for inclusive prosperity as projected by the country's long-term development plan, Malawi 2063. Mindful of United Nations' central transformative promise of leaving no one behind towards the attainment of sustainable development goals by 2030, government is positioning to rid the streets of all street-connected children. Patricia Gariati is Minister of Gender, Community Development and Social Warfare. She admits challenges with such a move. First time when we removed the street-connected the, the street children, uh, they were at the police. We did ask the parents to come and pick them, thinking that they're going to take care of them. In the actual sense, they didn't even do that. Lilongwe Social Rehabilitation Center is one of the places where street-connected children are kept when removed from the streets. But as explained by center manager for the facility, Peter Magomero, under funding challenges, have over the years pushed the kids back to the streets. Sometimes it takes time for us to be, to be given funding, maybe three months. Now this is that maybe we need to have food or to pay all the electricity. This reporter further caught up with one of the country's behavioral psychologists, Chiwaza Bandawe, to further understand why street-connected children keep returning to the streets. They have certain aspects of power and control over others, over their situation, that actually makes them feel important and significant. Whereas sometimes when they are uh, not on the streets, they might not feel so important and significant. Experience has shown that if given a chance, such children equally have what it takes to grow into productive and dependable citizens. One Moses Malabu, a former street connected child, now 10 Luana graduate. He has since founded a child focused NGO in Lilongwe to help those in need. The government can intervene by uh, selecting some of them to train them vocational skills. According to a 2017 report on street-connected children survey, the country's cities are home to about 4,000 street-connected children where the realities of life expose and harden them to grow away from an ideal citizen. When all is said and done, many agree that the future that awaits the lives of street-connected children will inform part of our collective future as a nation. Thomas Ipiada, MBC, Lilongwe.